My name is Katie Dodd from the Hockey Museum and this morning I have the pleasure of talking to the great Val Robinson. Val played for both Great Britain and England over a period of 20 years, probably still a record for an international hockey career. Val played for England from 1963 to 1983, being awarded 149 caps, and for Great Britain from 1978 through to 1983, gaining a further 21 Great Britain caps. So, with the Olympics coming up, it would be great to examine your memories um, of your GB career. And my first question is, do you remember your first GB match? Uh, I do indeed. Oh. <laughs> uh, amazingly, my advanced years. Um, yeah, what do I remember? Thinking that the squad was something special, like it added an extra dimension at the latter end of my career. And I thought, thinking about Olympics, I thought this team had a you know, really good chance. And then we played that game, and that war horse knocked in three penalty corners, yeah. <laughs> for some rated knots, and it left one, you know, sort of thinking, mm, right, well, we'll see. I actually remember the corners more than um, anything else. You know, it took us a bit by. That was, that was Fiki Boerhorst, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She was a bit of a demon at short corners. That again. I mean, I've seen her rattling goal after goal after goal after goal, you know, over the few years. Mm. Yes. And did but what what sort of protection? Do you remember what Pauline Gibbon had on in protection in those days? Well, <laughs> put it this way, she didn't look like they look now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you could recognise her. Uh, but no, I mean, obviously, it was... Not the same sort of gear, well, not the same sort of pitch, really, at that time. You played on grass. Do you remember that? Uh, actually, I, I played, believe it or not, I played more on AstroTurf than I have on grass. But, yeah, um, I think that tournament was grass. Yes, that's right. And that yeah. was it was played at the Wagner Stadium, which, of course, is where the Europeans have just been played. Yeah, um, yeah. So it was obviously grass, grass pitches in, in that first match. But of it course, was. Yeah. your second match must have been more memorable for you, though. It was your second match, but it was the third match in the tournament. Right. Uh, now, um, I can't think who came in. I think it was Jan Jariska in the second. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I remember that Wynne, who was coaching then, Win kept, kept winking at me that evening. And I thought, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not taking this on board. <laughs> But I think I might be playing tomorrow. That was in the third game. Yeah. Uh, and I was. But I was playing on the left, which, as you know, wasn't a no. third choice. And, and that was it. I played on the left. I turned my shoulder to the, my left shoulder to the post. I smacked in the three crosses that came across. As a and, great left winger would. Uh, and that, and that, was, that was it, really. So it was not quite saying whether there I'll show you or or anything it was just a bit of that I expect yeah you know I mean being and then your third match you scored four, you scored four times yeah, yeah. and I, you know, I don't really remember much of that but I, what I do remember is that we had to take our own food the night before the match because there was no catering for an Olympic qualifier. So we all had to take food to cook Help. The, before the game. And I couldn't believe it. And I think I took a pan of Irish stew. I so thought, look at that. That looks, that really does look great. Anyway, it obviously was great. And I should have eaten it more often. Because mm. I went out and scored four goals. But I remember, don't remember anything about them. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. More about having to take my Irish stew. <laughs> well, I, I must admit, I've, I've, I've heard many stories about preparations for games, but I haven't heard one where they you've had to take your own food. Oh, we did. It was one of the universities. Right. So obviously there was not catering, you know, yeah. and students were away. So mm. we took our own. So, and I was like, right, I'll take Irish stew. <laughs> it did the trick. Right up your street. 
So yeah. h- how do you feel that that Great Britain team that you were selected for developed? Obviously, your aim was to play in the 1980 Olympics. Yeah, definitely. And, and it would have. Well, it did qualify. Mm. Um, we didn't have any recognition for it for a while. And then we got a little plaque, um, you know, named that you were an Olympic qualifier. And, yeah, I, I, I was strongly as a belief that that would have come back with the gold medal. Mm, it could have been interesting, but it was it was a very good squad. Well, it's a, it was a, the heyday of um, the Welsh hockey, wasn't it? There were super players at that time, yeah, mm. yeah, and great. Uh, yeah, it was excellent. Oh, so, I mean, I must have done a tragedy because none of that squad who would have gone to the 1980 Olympics ever got the opportunity to play in the Olympics. Well, no, and the Los Angeles ones was even more of a disappointment, really, because at least Afghanistan wasn't on your conscience, if you had any conscience, with the Moscow Olympics. In retrospect, we should have gone. Um, but at the time, I thought, well, at least, <laughs> you know, not not going to have that on my conscience. Uh, But they were going to take the qualifying for Los Angeles in a track record after Moscow. So that was the two years after Moscow Mm. because we then broke up as England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales for the next World Cup. It was after um, Vancouver. Right, yeah. 79. And the GV team stayed on and played New Zealand and Australia and we'd already played everyone else so we had a good, good track record. We'd beaten them. Mm. And then when it came to Los Angeles, they decided to take the track record two years before Mm. Los Angeles, which meant we didn't have one. We haven't played any matches Mm. at all because we'd been England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales and as far as we were concerned, we'd qualified, you know, mm. from in the two years after Moscow. Anyway, so they still don't really let us down on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, after that, they changed the system of, of qualification, didn't they? Or, or made yeah. it certain it was clearer what the process was. Yeah. Yeah, and then they qualified, of course. Yes. Um, very, yeah. very sad. Anyway, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's a regret. I mean, obviously, Olympics are something mm. I would imagine to be special, but, it, but not something I ever really, you know, dwelt on. Mm-hmm. If I look at your, I mean, your very long career, who would, who would you say had the most influence on your hockey career? There's absolutely no doubt about that. <laughs> my rock, my soulmate, my best <laughs> friend, Quinn. Yeah, I, I kind of knew you were going to tell me that, Val. Um, well, uh, yeah, he was. Well, he was so obviously such a support for you. Yeah, if I needed it, that was. Mm. You know, he, he wasn't a. Well, I, I can't explain Katie mm. because I would always take his word as a, a balanced one, mm. logical one, truthful one, and yeah, so. Was there a, yeah, and, and that's I think that's brilliant. And for those of us who've known you and Gwyn, that is so obvious that uh, what a fantastic partnership the two of you had for all that time. So I think it, he was a tremendous support and a friend to all of us, obviously. Yes, yeah. yeah. And um, fair to the opposition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was there anybody within the hockey community who you felt had given you guidance or was a, a role model for you? Because you were a role model for so many other people. So... I, I can't believe I'm a role model. Yeah, all these people um, who took up drinking so half, half, half pints. role models, really. You did yeah. As people as role models in, in our day, in my day, mm. really. Yeah. Um, I mean, lots of people... I mean, I could go back to 67 and say Vi Chamberlain was, yeah. a, you know, someone I really respected, her opinion, mm-hmm. and she was the coach at the time. Um, and I suppose different people in different decades or different years when you played so long. Yeah. Um, and lots of people I've admired and, <laughs> and some people I've, you know, <laughs> it's not felt that way about. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, can you? Who was the best player you ever played against? I, you know, I, apart from never being able to remember names, um, I had problems always with that um, Dutch left half at the time. I think she was Jose someone. Oh, I'd, yes. I yes. remember the surname for the life in me. Yes, and she, she was an excellent player, dirty player, would take you out, you know, without a yeah. sort of... Um, but skillful, and uh, she, yeah. she was, she was, she was, yeah, a good, a, a good player. I remember there was a. Um, there was a German centre forward that you always had a. Oh uh, yeah, Veronica. Yes. Ver- Veronica Wolf was it? Well, I'm trying. Uh, yeah, I think she was a wolf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I. Uh, well, I always got on with her. Yeah. I mean, we. I had to because you were. We were made to um, speak to one of the Germans. Yeah. Because they weren't much loved at the time. <laughs> And uh, she was the person I had to go to, and yeah, she we got on well. Yeah, was it your say Pullman's the Dutch woman? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, <laughs> I can. I've seen her down a couple of times playing for Holland in your era, and that's the name I would remember as well. Yeah. Yeah. She is brutal. Yeah. All no, right. no, she, yeah. But, but, a good, I, but a good player, she, obviously. She does stand out as like somebody on the left hand side defence who you thought, mm, what do I do here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Um, what about um, the best player you played alongside in an England oh, I, I LGBT? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, same problem, different decades, different people. Yeah. And in my early days, uh, Denise Ferry, yeah. uh, no doubt. Yeah. And of course, being a right, you know, and at that time I was a right wing, you tend to appreciate the, you know, the complications. And yeah, in the in my mm. early years, she would have been the one. And then you could have oh, I mean, so many. I mean, like in later years, Swin, because she's sent forward, I'm on the run. You know, people who you're actually uh, partnership mm. with, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, t- tend to stand out. Most. I, I had admired lots of uh, centre halves. Um, yeah. Who played on our side and on someone opposition like, sides? Yeah, yeah. So someone like Chris Aspinwall was that? Uh, was she? She was a left. Chris was a good player. Are there other players who you think you've played with um, or against who you've ad- admired in the sense of the impact they've had or the changes they've made or the stands they've made? Because um, you yourself, I feel, were a a principled player um, and you said what you thought um, and you probably admired other people for for doing that well, as well. you say that but um, I'm not sure I did say All right. what I thought. I think I, I, I know you say this about me but I, I am quite a non-confrontational person mm. so I don't like confrontation and what I did have, having played for so long and being observant, see what was going on that was right and what wasn't right, but learn to have to keep my own counsel. Mm. Uh, and it's that's hard to make you understand. But there were times when saying anything would not solve anything. And then there were other times when you, you could say things mm. and hope that there might be a bit of change. Mm. People like Jenny Cardwell, I mean, she would always confront the situation. And, I, you know, I, I admired her for that. I'm Ellis. You know, lots of people who I think possibly made things change. I wouldn't say that I, I, the only thing I made change was when I was England captain and I felt that it should have been someone else. And it, 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 the voting system was really weird. And at the, the council in the end, I said that people must be allowed to nominate the people they want. 
or the selectors must just make an appointment and, you know, have done with it. Anyway, that, that's what happened. <laughs> so right. they just made an appointment as, a, as captain yeah. and gone in. And I remember telling Mrs. Chris that I thought at the time it should have been Hazel Feltwell. And she said, Hazel Feltwell will never captain England. Now, that, why not? Mm. I, I don't know. When I sh- really should have been captain, when we'd won the four territorial matches, and everybody was assured I would be captain. There were about five of these players in the team, and I begged them not to vote for me. <laughs> and they said, no, why not? We, you know, just one. I said, I don't wish for this job. Just give it to someone else. And when um, Phil, uh, what was his surname? Uh, Alison? Sorry? Phil Allison. Yes. When she announced the captain, oh no, I saw her mouth move and say, Chris has got it. You know, and I thought, well, I could have told you that. (laughs) (laughs) You know, because she got it because I beg people. You campaigned on her behalf then? Well, I wasn't really campaigning campaigning on her behalf Mm. necessarily, but on. Probably, probably, in retrospect, I think, yeah, maybe it was, yeah, because yeah. we were friends. But I thought she would do a job. Mm. Um, in the end, they didn't like it. So, again, Chris was one who would yeah. speak out. And people get to be their own worst enemies, like Dory Arkell saying, oh, I've just had a lovely path. Hot bath. <laughs> I can tell Alice and going up the wall because you don't have a hot bath prior to just going out, you know, <laughs> on the pitch. So, um, well, that's, yes, that's... anyway, the next year, hmm. um, I, I, I did become captain, and then after that, that's when I saw the appointments. Uh, that, oh, that is because Hazel's name never came up on nomination. Hmm. Uh, that that was really not right because a lot of the team and the Midlanders at that, you know, would have wanted her, yeah. and she may well not have got it, but she deserved the chance of the vote. Mm, yeah. And so I thought, well, it's not fair. Players are voting, and they're not necessarily got the person of their mm. that would like to have had a go with. So you can do it yourself. <laughs> Just do it. And they did. Mm. And I don't know what the system is now. Well, I don't know what it is now. No, I think the, I think it's probably gone through every combination of options that there are. Um, I think it's a player. I think it's a player decision now. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, I think there's so much more um, conversation and discussion than the days when you were, uh, you and I were playing. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it is very different. Yeah. Rumour has it, Val, that you didn't like training for hockey. Uh, uh, But how come, uh, my my memory was that you never missed a game through injury. Is that true? Well, uh, rumour's wrong (laughs) in saying I didn't like training. (laughs) But what what people think of, thought of always is hard work and stuff. I mean, I was... I probably ran more than any other player, uh, not in the game, you know, during my physical activities, you know, cross-country after cross-country after country. Yeah. In the day, uh, that wasn't hard work. That was enjoyable. All types of physical activity were enjoyable. I played more sports. Mm. I didn't just concentrate on hockey. I was blessed with a a very good sense of balance. I was a good gymnast. You know, I did all the other things. Uh, And for me, exercise was enjoyment. And I couldn't fall into that thing of thinking, oh, God, you know, this is grueling. And then when we came to have specific uh, training schedules, they were not a problem. Mm. 
But no, I never specifically did activity that was um, especially training for international hockey. Mm. I mean, uh, the nature of my job, I taught the game. And then when we did Foxhall Bank, I yeah. coached the game. Uh, I had a sticky um, in my hand permanently. Mm. Um I tried to show kids where to get your acceleration and all, of, you know, so I was doing it all of the time mm. and uh, smoke, drink, do what you like, but I had a basic fitness mm. and of course I was lucky with muscles and so on and, and balance, although I had learned how to fall, I think the uh, judo helped me that. And, and, yeah, just really, all I can say was lady luck. You know, that's what I was born with, the, mm. the certain genes. And, uh, I mean, uh, my memory of you being often a target for the opposition, particularly the Dutch, and you riding tackle after tackle, bruise after bruise, but you always seem to come through without major injuries. Can you remember any major injuries? I seem I, to remember I, I, in your final I, yeah. year, maybe. I self-treated any injury that I had, mm. which wasn't always right. Yeah, I had all the breath knocked out of me in the first European championships we played, ever played. Uh, and ended, ended up with a cracked sternum. I've had broken ribs uh, from a very heavy challenge from a budget who played with Norfolk. I mean, as in, you know, yeah. broken ribs. I've been taken out with a goalkeeper's and had broken ribs. Um, all self healed. I've never had anything. I've had a, a cracked jaw, also, just let it heal. So I have had that type of injury, mm. but uh, not at the time when I've been playing international. Yeah. Or I think I've missed a territorial with a hamstring. Yeah, I, I think I remember that, the hamstring. Yeah. Cause that was an unusual... Because yeah. from, from your fellow players, you, you seem to ride all these t awful tackles and not get injured, but that's presumably because you didn't tell us. Well, I, I don't suppose it was a... Yes. Well, no, the, the the sternum at the Europeans was the very last game. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, and you could hear the wind go out of my mm. uh, system. It was horrible and painful. Um, but that was it. That was, that was the end of the season. Right. Uh, and so, well, I don't, it wasn't that... It, when you're growing up with a group of lads and you're playing football and all their games, mm. you did learn to ride things and not make too mm. much fuss about things. Mm -hmm. With your uh, particular style, I mean, your your speed and your dribbling skills, um, if you had a choice, would you prefer to play on grass or AstroTurf? <laughs> or well, pitch? if it were... Old Trafford or Trent Bridge, you know, which is flat and absolutely yeah, yeah. Uh, like a billiard table. That was lovely. But obviously AstroTurf. I, I, I played more on AstroTurf. I mean, people say, you know, you would have loved AstroTurf without thinking that <laughs> I, I was playing still when AstroTurf was invented. <laughs> yes. so I played on for a long time after, yeah. albeit club level or whatever level. Yeah, I definitely asked her. Because I, I mean, certainly I would, like you, spanned, started my career on grass and moved to AstroTurf, which I absolutely loved. But I look at the modern game now, just from the skills perspective, and the thought of being able to do the reverse sweep low down, the thought of getting up and down now, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, I think the all, you like I would probably, the all team game would be fine. Um, because we like to run all over the pitch, but the the close skills would may not have suited my game, but maybe would have suited yours because you were someone with who who mastered those sort of skills. Oh, I, I t tell you the new rules when you ask me one of the questions. <laughs> would I like to play in the modern game? The answer is yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I might uh, become a really good player. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, you were only average. We know that, Val. Well, I, I think under these new rules, I could have been a bit better. Uh, <laughs> well, 
Would you have liked uh, the substitutions, though? Some players of, of our era like to have played the whole game. We didn't want to come on and off. Would you? Have... Well, well, we, we would, wouldn't we? You know. Yeah. And I understand you. You can't do it in the modern game, or or can you? I don't know. No. I think that certainly the forwards in the midfield, the amount of running they're asked oh, yeah. to do. Yeah. However fit you are. Yeah. I think it would have been very interesting to see you. At your height, playing in the modern game, Val, I think. Uh... Yeah, I, I, well, I would have liked to think that I could. Um, I could be wrong, I don't know. But um, I think it would have suited me. Yeah, I think uh, it, it's definitely... The thought of people like you um, and Swinney and Maggie Suyev playing at the top level on AstroTurf now would be, yeah. quite, would be quite interesting, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Yeah. yeah. Some uh, some just little funny questions. If you had to choose between beer or wine, Val, what would you choose? Well, it would have been beer in my <laughs> early days, mm. and it would be wine or Guinness now. Oh, Guinness. Yeah, well, I've got, to get, I've got to get some iron into me, Katie. Oh, right. And would you choose potatoes, rice or pasta? Well, there's absolutely no question <laughs> there, is there? I'm Irish descent, yeah, and it's potatoes. You have to tell me about um, when we toured in 1979 for the World Cup in Vancouver. We toured. We did a tour beforehand through America, and I do remember everywhere we went, they gave us sort of buffets. Yeah, where we yeah. got sort of rice and pasta dishes. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, and I remember yeah. you standing there going, "Can somebody just give me a potato?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I still have that uh, mind, I think. Yeah. 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 yeah that's... I do eat pasta now. Yeah. And, uh, if I could learn to cook rice properly, I might like rice. But yeah. I can't. Yeah. It's soggy. Do you have a what, greatest memory or match from any of your GB or England games? One that oh, sticks out? Yeah. Oh, I mean, just so much in my memory bank that mm. is memorable. There is not one that would stand out as, right, that's the one. I mean, it depends what you're thinking about, whether it's actual things of winning. And I have to be honest and say, that was never my, you know, some people could come off and be absolutely heartbroken at, at losing. Well, I didn't like losing. I could get angry about it, but not morose, if you will. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I remember lots. I remember an outstanding match at Leverkusen in 67 against South Africa. Uh, it was awesome. We won 3-2. That was England. Mm. Um, obviously, England winning in 75, that's got to be a, you know, a breakout. Yeah. Uh, you know, a moment. Um, all of the trips, like the New Zealand trip, mm. the things that you got from the, you know, friends and the countries you saw, and opening up the world, really. Did you enjoy tours? Yeah, I, I can say I did. I wouldn't have enjoyed the New Zealand trip without uh, being able to enjoy it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, because for me, eight weeks away or whatever it was, seeing things that we were going to see and do things we were going to do and have to go home and try to put that into... I wouldn't have liked that. The yeah. fact that we shared it, although we didn't share, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, he and David Harvey came along in tandem. And, yeah, so, I, that, yeah, I enjoyed every trip mm. with England and with GB, uh, definitely. I'm interested, as you de you haven't mentioned Wembley, was, and you have, of course, got the record of playing 19 times at Wembley, more than anybody well, else. Well, yeah, uh, Wembley, Wembley, special. Mm. Absolutely one special day in the year. Um, and the one with the Queen there, of course, was a bonus, an extra. So, yeah, Wembley's, oh, uh, you didn't care. Well, you would have liked the pitch to be better. Yeah, but yeah. that Wembley, the, the feeling of Wembley, yeah, every single one of those was stand out. Mm. Um, 
well, you know, Katie, you well, played. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to me, it's it's probably my standout memory is Wembley. Yeah. I mean, I, even ahead of the World Cup, um, yeah. Wembley for me was uh, just that, that, that the noise and the, the crowd. You could... Oh, yeah, uh, just, uh, well, 65,000 at mm, one time. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, you, you can't replicate that anywhere else. It's uh, yeah. It was uh, definitely special, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the one game... You know, if you drop for any other, you wanted to play at Wembley. Oh, Val, we've had a, a lovely chat around. Are there any? Is there any other stories that you feel would amuse me? Uh, don't too many. I should have written my own book yonks ago. Yeah, uh, I've always said that. Yeah. Well, I think but you're... I have. The Fox, as well as your hockey career, which I think you say that when you were playing, when you were younger, you didn't. there weren't such things as role models. Well, by the time we came, the next generation came along... Um, not that counting myself the next generation, um, but I still... I went to Wembley, Val, in 1966, I think. I think and it might yeah. have been your first Wembley. And I went there, and Dory Arkell was my idol because she was a right yeah. wing and I was On the a right wing. wing, yeah. And she was blonde. Yes. And I went there as Dory Arkell, with Dory Arkell in my mind and I came away with Val Robinson. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid. So that it I, wasn't blonde. I no, it wasn't blonde. But I, I, I changed my allegiance, and I think you have inspired many in your career. Um, and I think that's as part of, as being a player. Um, I think your colleagues around you will have been inspired, and also the many kids who came to Wembley and supported hockey. But I think the other part, when you stop playing international hockey, is if the legacy of the Fox Hill. Um, yeah, and, back, and the number of not only children, um, school kids, but also adults that yeah. met, had a, a whale of a time as we did when we came up with Berkshire. Yeah, um, I remember. And yes, <laughs> uh, those. I don't know how many years you ran that, but you and Gwyn must have had some fun moments oh, with that. Definitely, yeah. Hard work, but yeah, we we never regretted that. That move, that was super. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I, I've got books full of comments, you know, from um, in the visitors' book, and I do take pride in that, you know. Um, mm, and so you should. Um... But it it started off with my, I suppose, the schools that came with my name in mind, you know. Oh. Our Robinson coaching, but it never became that. It became Foxhall Bank because of Foxhall Bank and of how it was run, and that was down to two of us, mm. not one. Of us. And people didn't say, "Oh, we're going to Al Robinson's." Uh, oh, we're going to Foxhall Bank. You know, which mm. is quite different. And so it should have been. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how well, we ran it. I remember Gwyn in the kitchen. Yes. He's always in the kitchen. <laughs> right. well, I'm always in the kitchen. I, I, I did the kitchen the first 15 years or whatever it was before we went there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've, I've, well, I've visited uh, I've, in later years as well. I've, I've, visited, I've visited when you were still there. And do you still have the, the bench? Oh, it's here now. Yeah. It's had certain slats replaced. It's had some of its metalwork pulled to bits and then all put back again. And it's still in the same place as it was mm. when we moved in here. And um, we've been sitting on it today. And it's, Carol has said, it must not be moved. Yeah, I've definitely still mm. got it. And what does the inscription say? It says, Rambling Roses. And here's to you, Mrs Robinson. That's exactly what it says. <laughs> yes. on, on the occasion of your 60th. 60th birthday, that was it. It was very memorable for a number of us as well because we, I don't remember if we told you the story, but we tried to assemble it in the changing rooms. Uh, I knew that, and it was Shirley Nicholl, wasn't it, that yeah. um, pointed succeeded out. mainly, was it? Yeah, and Alison Alleybird, and it was pointed out part way through that we might not be able to get it out of the changing room once we'd assembled it which was exactly what the person we couldn't get it round the corner 
So we had to partially disassemble it again, get it out of the changing room and then f- do the final assembly in the room where the party was going to be. And then. So it was just as well that I wasn't prepared for coming to the party, wasn't it? <laughs> and I was late. You were late, that's right. Late to your own party on the one well, occasion... I didn't know it was one, did I? Uh, on the one occasion that Gwyn... Uh, yes. Didn't tell you the truth. Um, I'm delighted that that bench is there because. Uh, uh, oh, it is. Yes. It, well, yeah. It, yes. It was. It's a special bench. Yes, that's right. And uh, it to me that it brings back so many memories of the of the coach trips we went on when Paulie yeah. Gibbon and and the others would break into a um, either. Yeah, the songs. I love to go wandering. Song which ended up. Yes, Valerie. Yes. <laughs> And then the Simon and Garfunkel song, and here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. Yes. Well, I think yeah. it's a, 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 a statement of uh, where you sat within the body of any team you played in, Val. Yeah. So well, it's great. nice of you to say so, Katie. Mm. I just feel humbled, I suppose. You obviously got a lot out of hockey, uh, but you gave an awful lot to people as well. We all give in different ways, don't you? But I think your uh, lasting influences been tremendous as well. Well, very kind of you to say so, and uh, because you know people become coaches, they become like yourself, doing lots and lots of work. Mm. And I often think, oh dear, <laughs> what well, I think how I come back to the game. Yeah, well, the, the Fox Hill Bank uh, was obviously, I think, a, uh, well, yeah, tremendous I, undertaking. So well, I don't that think... was meant not to be elitist in any way. It was to. If the kids wanted to learn, wanted to play, come and do it. Yeah, I think uh, that's a, that's a tremendous legacy, Val, as well. Ahead, ahead of its time, probably. Well, it's, Val, it's been fantastic talking to you this afternoon. Um, yeah. And I've, I'm so glad we've managed to put down at least some of your thoughts and uh, memories of your time in hockey. 